Go on then. Go After on, you did the first part. No, you got to ask me about Gaza first. You mean Paul Gascoigne? Yeah. Um, uh, and is he going to play for England? Well, I hope he does. <laughs> I hope he does. But I heard he's got a bad back. Well, he's lucky. I've got two of them. Who's that then? <laughs> it's a very bad Jack Charlton. Oh! Sorry, Jack! Ross! Sorry, Jack. How are you? Very bad. Even the rock. Even the rock. Big. Is that the impersonation? Is that it's correct. Uh, I don't think anybody in the world can impersonate me. I do it. You've got to learn to say a butter first. Butter. butter. Hard on hini. Why not likely? How do we, man? <laughs> well, Jack, lovely to see you. Thanks for, for coming along. We're just talking about Terry Venables and the England setup. Have you got any views on, on no, that? No, no, none at all. Right, okay. <laughs> 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 Tell you, no, it's not my, it's not my, I'm a manager of an international side, so it's not really relevant that I would discuss another manager in the way uh -huh. he does his job, as you would right. be right. Uh -huh. Terry will get on with his job the way he thinks he should be done, the way I've done it for the last ten years. You can only do it yourself. If you start letting other people interfere or, or, or asking for advice from people like me, you get nothing done at all. Right, well... Terry's all right, leave him alone. <laughs> if you were... Uh... If you were manager of England, Jack, let me no. put it this way. <laughs> there, there is an outcry and there's, there's a public demand for Matt Letizia to play, it seems. Would you pick Letizia? Uh, again, I can't discuss it with you, no. I mean, <laughs> Matt Letizia, in my opinion, uh, if I had a need for him with the international side in Ireland and I had a specific role that I wanted him to undertake, yes. Mm -hmm. But then again, finding a, a specific role for Matt Letizia may be a bit difficult with the England set of the way that is. Uh -huh. I mean, you, you've got so many. I'm talking about it and I don't want to. Don't I talk can't. About it, yeah. I can't really. I mean, I, they're not my players. Ask me about Paul McGrath. Okay. No, don't ask me about Paul McGrath. <laughs> <laughs> is it pretty. Is that... Terry Venables is probably one of the strongest characters, men, I've ever met. And for him not to pick Letizia, I think there must be something between them. Because. Uh, you know, other, other than the fact that he's a fantastic player, he scores wonderful goals, consistently for an average team, uh, Terry is a very strong character, and he probably knows why he's doing it. Um, but then again, he doesn't have to tell anybody, and uh, I think uh, you probably won't see Matthew Letizia playing for England, uh, starting for England, for, for quite a few games. We all talk about skill and, uh, and the ability to control and pass yeah. and... Uh, and, and, and play like the Brazilians play. Everybody's always had that dream that we should play like the Brazilians play. Now then, where do you fit, uh, where do you fit a George Best in his heyday into an England side at that time? Yeah. Do you mould the team around a George Best or does George have to do a role within that, yeah. th that job? I mean, Matt Letizia, I've watched Matt and I've seen him seven or eight times. Not talking about the England job, talking about Matt Letizia as a player. He's got to, he can't play from midfield and do as little as he does when the opposition have got the ball. Yeah. I've got a business with Matt, so I'm um, probably slightly biased. I think he's got to play Letizia. That's my own personal view. I think he's the greatest player in this country without any doubt. And to my mind, you would build your team around any player like that. And I think we've got to do that uh, and start winning things. Stop did, any, did, did anybody see... Uh, Jack told me not to ask this question, by the way. Did anybody see last night television where Bob Stoko on the programme was talking about illegal payments? I asked Jack in the, behind, behind the stage about that, and he had a terrific answer for that, because uh, apparently Bob Stoker has come out and said that Don Revy offered him a bung to take the game easy. Jack Cholton was actually at the game. No, I, I, it was just, you surprised me, because I didn't see the programme last night. But I remember the game, it was against Bury, and it was, uh, and I, I, I was injured in the game, and Leeds were doing badly in the, in the second division at the time. And Don Revy was, in my opinion, one of the most honest, straightforward guys I ever worked for. And uh, I remember walking out with Don, because I'd been injured in the game uh, previously, and I wasn't playing. And as I walked out through the, towards the, the, where they go out, it's like, a, it's like a square area. The dressing room's here for the home team and there for the away, the away team. And as we walked out, we, Bob Stoker was coming out. And Don said to him, I hope you've told your lads to take it easy tonight. It was like one friend saying to another friend whose team are in trouble, take it easy tonight. But the teams were on the field. 
I mean, it wasn't if John was asking him. The teams were already on the field, so there was nothing he could do about it. It was yeah. just a throwaway remark by Don. Now, 25 years later, when you suddenly come up with, you add, embellish it a little bit to make, sure, make it sound as if it was really right. Not necessarily good. I also told you about a little thing that happened with me once. I went to a dinner in the Queen's Hotel in Leeds. I was manager at Middlesbrough at the time. And I walked in and uh, I was late and all the lads were sat at the different tables. All the Leeds players were the guests for the night. And the table I was sat with, Norman Hunter was sat there. And Norman at the time was the, the, the manager at Bristol. And we were playing Bristol the following Saturday in Middlesbrough. And I sat down and talking to Norman across the table and uh, just generally about things. And one of the guys up the table, a Jewish man or whatever, he, there was a Jewish event, so it must have been a Jewish guy. And he looked across and he said, ah, you play them on Saturday. So I said, yeah. And Norman, just off the cup, said, yeah, I'll be up to see Jack with a, with a brown paper envelope full of pound notes. And I went, wait a minute, Norman. I said, take that back. I said, you don't say things like that. Has for to a be a start. Check. Has to be a check. For a start. <laughs> for, yeah, for, could it be? Well, for a start, 20 years time, that guy may just say, I heard Norman Hunter say to Jack Charlton, yeah, yeah. I will be up with a pocket full of pound notes for you. Because yeah. that we beat him three nothing, so it never it was never an event. But yeah. people talk in football, and they just make throwaway remarks. And then when people who think they've heard what they heard repeat it, they usually embellish it to make it sound as if they're right. Yeah. And this is wrong. In the '94 season, Jack, we've just gone through talking about drugs and 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 cancer our situation. We've also seen the thing with um, George Graham under investigation. What? Are people, I, I are, are, like people, are people taking too much, making too I much? I like of George. I like these lads. I like all the ones that have done just, and I like all the lads like Bruce. I think it'd be wonderful in the game of football. Great. And I would hate to think that there was anything wrong. I mean, I'll tell you, if the game is as bent as it, it is said, then I hope everybody concerned gets what they deserve. You've got a reputation of being a hard manager. I mean, I read somewhere that you fined two of your players for having sex at half-time, a thousand pounds. And you said that if there'd been a woman involved, it would have been double. Double. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what about, um, it's great to have Jack on the program. Um, what about um, when you played at United with Jack's brother, Bobby Charlton? I mean, Bobby was a great, great player, wasn't yeah. he? Mm. But he, 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 was he miserable? I'm only asking, I'm only yeah. asking. Yeah. Jack, what do you think about um, the way the, the media are portraying football in as much as nowadays you've got 13 cameras here, you've got cameras of the corner flags, you've got cameras of the halfway line. Television has got everything in football now, but you're never going to get rid of it. And it's, it's something that's going to be there forever and ever and ever. And we're going to get more and more of it. What about the um, action replay? They're talking now about well, an action I mean, replay. You've, you've got that really. If you're going to punish people with an action replay, you've got to have football. You've got to have cameras at every football ground in the country, take tape and everything that happens in the game. Because it's unfair that the Premier League players should be the ones put under scrutiny all the time when the first division and right away yeah. down the third, fourth, get nothing done to them at all, because they're under the lights and have been punished by television. I mean, we saw Justin's little act when he, when he had, had a confrontation in... John, yeah. John. John, yeah. John, just now get mixed up with a pair of them. Dave, don't, don't get them mixed up. No, no, sorry. <laughs> John. Ladies and gentlemen, very open, very refreshing, yeah! Mr Jack Charlton.